Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm Coco and today I'm going to be cooking some delicious keto style chile rellenos. I make these very often for my family because I'm usually low carb in it but not everybody else is so I'm going to do a variation with beans so that everybody can have something that they'll enjoy. And so if you want to learn how to make this really easy delicious meal, stay tuned on Cook Love. Okay, you guys, so these are the things you're gonna need. Some queso panela to put in the chile rellenos. These chiles pasillas there. I like this size because you can stuff this with um, the meat and the cheese and it holds a lot. So you're gonna need about six of these for the family. Um, some onions, which I already have cut up. I'm just showing any onion will work. A little bit of cilantro for garnish. About four to five tomatoes. Uh, sour cream. And this is the bag of beans that I used to make um, frijoles de la olla, but you can use any beans. And then a couple of garlic cloves. And that's basically about it. There are going to be other things that you'll need with, to season it, which could be garlic salt to your taste, uh, chicken bouillon or consomme, salt, pepper, uh, maybe a little bit of oregano, but we'll go along as we cook. Oh yes, you guys, and the other thing, one of the main things I forgot was you're gonna need some shredded beef. And it's usually about one to one and a half pounds. And I do it in the crock pot and I season it with garlic, pepper, salt, chicken bouillon, and a little bit of oregano if you wanna make it like Mexican style. And so that's already done i usually do that the night before and then this meal is pretty quick so right now we're gonna go and we're gonna start uh, toasting our chiles toasting. but you could do it in the oven if you're too afraid to do them this way okay Okay, you guys, so while that's toasting, I'm gonna show you the beans. So here's the beans, I have them all done. And they are cooked, I cooked them for like four hours, so it takes a while. And it's just seasoned with salt and pepper, always a bay leaf and a little bit of consomme in there. And they're just boiled until they're tender. And um, like I said, I use a, this bag of olla. Okay, so look at these. They're starting to get really toasty. And they're looking good. And then what we're gonna do in the meantime is in a little sauce, well, a medium-sized saucepan, we're gonna put our tomatoes, our onions, and all that in there to boil. Okay, you guys, so I cut the end off of the little tomato, the Roma tomato, a little piece of the, and then I'm just going to, I made onion rings the other night and I had these leftover onions, so I'm going to use the rest of that up. So I would say it would be about a quarter of an onion, so about this size in half and then another half. So if you cut this in four pieces, one fourth of that. And then a garlic clove. I'm putting the whole thing in there because we're, gonna, we're going to blend it. For our, uh, for our, basically our chile relleno bath, tomato bath, 
which is going to make it low carb. So here's everything. We're going to put some water. A little bit of um, salt to cook it with. And I don't make it spicy because the chile vacias are already sometimes spicy. So if we want to spice it up, we don't put anything else on it. We just put tapatio on it. Okay guys, so now that the chilies are done, we're going to get a bowl and I'm gonna put them in this bowl. If you can see, these other ones are already all done. I'm gonna put them in the bowl. I'm just a weirdo. Anyway, here we go. We're done with that part. Now we're gonna go and prep the rest of our stuff so that we can put it all together. Okay, so this is the cheese I'm using, but you can use any kind of cheese. You can use queso fresco, whatever, but I like this one because it's a little bit squishier and like creamier, but it's up to you. There's, you could use sharp cheddar, Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack. I've used every cheese. You just cut it in a, like a squ uh, long rectangle and it works fine. It's up to you. The sky's the limit with this. Okay, so I'm opening this up, and since I'm making six, about six chile rellenos, there's a little tiny one in there, so I'm just going to make, I'm just cutting this open, and I'm going to put it in my bowl there, it's garbage. I'm going to cut it like into six pieces. There's no like perfect way to do this. Uh, I'll do this for the small one. You can always take from it and make it shorter. And But I'll just cut about six pieces. So if I, if one needs one, I'll just take a little chunk of this off and make it bigger. It's very forgiving. And then I'm going to cut up some cilantro. Hey guys, I do a lot of stuff in my crock pot. This is my friend. So, here's my crock pot. It's been cooking the meats in there and it's ready to get shredded up. And you can also use that broth in the tomato little bath that we're gonna give them. So that's perfect and there's about a pound in here you won't use it all but I just buy like the roast that's already ready to go and I just I use whatever I can uh, for leftovers I can make tacos since my son doesn't eat the chile rellenos he likes tacos so I'll make him a couple shredded beef tacos okay you guys so I use this I use like a paper towel but you can use whatever you have um, to put the fat on top of it so this is the shredded beef but if you can see there's like a little bit of fat so you want to take this off and it's best to wait till your meats um, like enough to handle it because god it it's painful when you're doing it when it's hot unless you do it with a fork and then I don't know it's just too much work to do it like that I just wait till it's cool I'll just do everything else and then I'll do this part and then then it's just real easy to shred up and yes this is pre-seasoned meat so it's already been seasoned when I put it in the crock pot I put about I usually put about two cups three cups of water then I put garlic onion uh, beef bouillon pepper and that's if I'm gonna make it just like Mexican style um, I just keep it real simple because you can always add other spices to this if you're gonna make like, if this isn't enough 
I mean, if this is too much for you, you can always use this for other stuff. So I just try and be very, uh, uh, I don't like to just season everything for one thing because I know that I could use this for something else. That's a big chunk of fat. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go through here and shred a little bit finer as I get a chance. But, so far, so good. I'm going to throw this and wash my hands. Now that the meat's ready, I have my chilies and they're cooled. And then this is the part where you come through here and you just peel off the skin. They might rip a little, but it does not matter. I mean, at least not to me because I'm going to stuff them. I just put it into the sink and then I gather it up and throw it in the trash after um, because it's just messy. And so I'm just going through here and I'm pulling off all of this and you can do it under water. If you go like this under the water, it makes it way faster. here some of them they might rip a little bit but as long as you just have basically like a pocket you'll be fine once they're in that uh, tomato bath they'll they're gonna hold together and they'll be fine so here is all that's peeled off and if you can see there's like a little hole so that'll be like the slit that I use. I'll slit it so that I can put the chiles in there. I mean the meat and the cheese in there. So after I do that, I'm gonna come back and show you how I take out the core. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I go through here and just take out the, I guess it's the stem, not the core. But I just come through here with the knife and I just pop out the seeds. That's it. And you'll get this. And then I just will just put the water through it again and get whatever. And then I'll just do that to all of them. So I got my blender all ready and now we're going to get the tomatoes and we're going to make our sauce in this blender which I really like. It's a ninja. It's a really good blender. And I'm going to get the tomatoes. And it's okay if they're still hot. You can wait till they cool but it's fine. I've used it just like this. And I'm going to get them out the garlic, everything, all the onions. Ooh. And then I'm not gonna use this water, but you can use it if you don't have anything else, but I have the beef broth, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna take it right out of my crock pot and I'm gonna get out. So this is one, this ladle that I have is a half of a cup. So I'm gonna put like one cup because you want it to be like kind of soupy, saucy. And we're gonna blend that up uh, on, I don't know. So now I'm 
now it's like a nice little sauce. And I'm going to, now we're going to save this because we're going to put this in a saucepan and make it, not a saucepan, a frying pan. We're going to put a little bit of oil in it, but we're going to save that for now. Right now we're going to stuff our chiles. Okay, so this part's pretty easy. You just have the chile like this. And I'll put some, actually I usually put cheese first. It doesn't matter, I mean, I just, I do it however it works for whatever I, like reason. You see, you can only always just do cheese if you like it. And you could always, you don't, just because you don't put these in the batter and all that, you could still use this and put it in a burrito with a tortilla and stuff. So I could tell this is this one's spicy. I could smell it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of meat in here. And they don't need to be able to close because we're just going to put this right into the tomato bath when it's ready. And yeah, this one still has some seeds in it, so I'm gonna take that out. Just take it out as you go, it's not a big deal. And if there's some seeds left in it, big deal. Just rinse it out. And I'm going to put the big chunk of cheese in here, just like that, and then some meat. And we got, and so I'll finish this up and then I'll be back. Okay, you guys, so now is the time that we're going to take our little skillet and we're gonna put a little bit of oil in there and we're gonna put our sauce in there. So that's the next thing to do and you wanna like let it start boiling before you put your chile rellenos in there. I'm putting about a teaspoon of avocado oil. As you know, with keto, all avocado oil has high heat, but it also is good fats. So this is a really good choice um, for if you're doing that. And if not, you can use regular canola oil. It's, I'm just, this is something that I use if I'm going to be cooking something just for the healthy fat. Okay, now we're gonna get our sauce. And I'm going to pour it into my sauce, into my frying pan. And there you have it. So we have our sauce here, warming up real nice. We'll keep that on medium heat. So if you're gonna be doing, let's say you are doing keto, but you want like a side, the best thing I could say is to just cut up like cabbage and tomato and maybe do like a little avocado salsa and then if for the regular carb people in your life you could just use beans tortilla but this is a way for everybody in the family to get what they want and enjoy a delicious meal that's home cooked and so we'll be back to put our chile rellenos in their bath now since this is only seasoned with a little bit of salt, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to season it to taste. I think you need a little bit, it needs a little bit more salt. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt. I usually try and put a little bit of Himalayan salt because it's good for you. Some cracked pepper. Probably about a, I don't know, probably about a half a teaspoon. Gotta have pepper. 
pepper in there. A small little bit of oregano. Where are you? And when you using it dried. So you just at this point want to season it. And I'm probably going to put a little bit more of the beef bouillon. Because I'm not probably just going to put like a little bit of it. It's probably this is about a teaspoon. And I'll have all of the ingredients uh, down below. And But you have to remember a lot of this spices and stuff are going to be to your own taste. So less is more. Start off slow and then put more as you go. Because you might not like garlic and everything. I do. <laughs> or you might want to be watching your salt. Okay, so now that this is to my flavor and it's smelling good, it tastes good, I'm going to come through and I'm going to start putting in my chiles. And all I'm gonna do, it's really simple, I'm just gonna place them in here. them aren't very perfectly pretty but that's okay believe me they're gonna get eaten and all I do is cook them and I just cook them until the cheese starts to melt as soon as the cheese melts you're good and you can always, at that point, you can always put more cheese on top if you like. Like, um, I've done the cotija cheese on top, which I am going to do this at this point. You do not have to do that. But as soon as the cheese melts, it's all good, and then it's ready to serve. So right now I'm doing the beans. The beans are starting to pop a little bit, so I know that it's ready to go. We're going to put a couple of that was not a good idea. Okay. So I'm making enough beans for my daughter, my husband, so I would say this is about nearly three cups of beans. These are all mashed. Yep. You could do it finer than that, which I will come through here in a minute and do it, but for now they're good. And then our stuff is boiling up real good. Oh my goodness, this looks so delicious. I'm just going to throw a little bit of the sauce on top so it goes inside. I'm just waiting for the cheese to melt, basically. Okay, so you can cover these and then just turn them off and let them um, heat all the way through. But they're good right now for me, so I'm going to leave them like that. I like to let them sit for a few minutes. And then now we are... Done, I'm gonna show you, like you can also do a rice with this uh, to make like a whole, full on whole meal. Rice beans, of course, with the, with the chile rellos, but I'm gonna just do, I try and keep it to like one carb uh, for each meal, just because then we're not eating so much just carbs like if i'm gonna make a mexican dish I'll, we add beans today in a couple days i'll make rice or fideo to go along with it or 
uh, corn on the cob. It's it's just how I make stuff, but I'm just trying to show you that there's a lot of other choices that you don't just have to uh, eat it that way. You can make it with like a salad. Of, I do a lot of um, cabbage salads. So you do cabbage with um, tomatoes, squeeze some lemon on top, and you're good. Or you can put avocados in it or make an avocado um, sauce if you guys want to see that kind of stuff. Let me know. I cook all kinds of stuff, not just Mexican inspired dishes. I cook everything. And I can't wait for you guys to see what else I have. So um, if you would like to follow me or subscribe to my channel, please do so. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I dress up plate up this chile relleno and this is my dinner for tonight here is the chile relleno and I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce on it sauce I meant crema agria and then you can always put sliced onions on here. You can put some avocado, which I'm going to put half of an avocado on mine to just give me those healthy fats that I need. And I'm gonna show you the finished product. So I'm gonna slice up the avocado like this. guy out and just put it right on top of my yummy dinner see that well here's the one that I make for the rest of the family which it's in a bean bath with the tomato that I make and so everybody gets what they want it looks good and you can always sprinkle a little bit of cotija cheese on top and avocados and sour cream and we're all eating good tonight okay you guys so here's the finished product Ooh, it looks really good and i'm just going to show you the meat inside and the cheese is nicely melted here and it's going to be a delicious dinner tonight and I'm going to stay on track which is even more important and my whole family is going to love this. I hope you guys will try this and if you guys can follow me I would love that I'm gonna make lots of videos for you guys to enjoy and follow along and just do what we love to do which is cook love bye